Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, glory be to God. We find ourselves in the land of the living, and we are very much grateful for that. And since God has given us the opportunity to be alive, we continue to thank him for that, and we continue to live every single day of our lives to maximize every moment we find ourselves on earth. And we thank God that consistently he has fed us with his word for the past five weeks. And today is a very great opportunity because uh, through the wisdom of God, today will be our last day that we'll be having our Monday's reflection in this particular Lenten season. Amen. Before we proceed to the word of God, I want you and I to sing our hymn of meditation AME Zion Hymenam 368. AME Zion Hymenam 368. Lord, speak to me that I may speak in living a course of thy tongue. As thou hast sought, so let me seek thy erring children lost and lone. We thank God. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you for the opportunity you have given us. Father, we are about to hear your word. We pray that you, you speak through your servant to every single one of us who will be listening to your word this particular day. Father God, and cause us to receive that grace that comes with your word so that we will live to fulfill our destiny and we will live according to the word that you are feeding us with this particular evening. In the mighty name of Jesus, have we prayed with thanksgiving. Amen. Our scripture we'll be considering tonight will be 2 Samuel chapter 6, verse 8 to 12. 2 Samuel chapter 6, verse 8 to 12. I'll be reading from the New King James Version. And David became angry because of the lost outbreak against Uzzah. And he called the name of the place Perez Uzzah to this day. David was afraid of the Lord that day and said, How can the ark of the Lord come to me? So David would not move the ark of the Lord with him into the city of David. But David took it aside into the house of Obed-Edom the Gittite. The ark of the Lord remained in the house of Obed-Edom, the Gittite, three months, and the Lord blessed Obed-Edom and all his household. Now it was told King David, saying, The Lord has blessed the, Lord has blessed the house of Obed-Edom and all that belongs to him because of the ark of God. So David went and brought up the ark of God from the house of Obedidom to the city of David with gladness. Amen. Uh, tonight I'll be speaking with you on the theme, learn to, to house God. Learn to house God. I know that some of you may be thinking, how can a human being create a house for God? Because God created us and the Bible makes us to understand that even the earth is his footstool. But give me some few minutes and you understand what I mean by learn to house God. Learn to house God. Let's, let's uh, do a little bit as Jesus on the scripture. This particular text we are considering tonight, uh, it's a text that uh, is really about, it was when David ascended the throne of Israel that these events Took place. Uh, David had been anointed by Samuel the prophet some years, and uh, David was striving to live according to the word of God. But David struggled a lot when the king uh, felt jealous that he could lose his throne to David. So he pursued David to destroy him. So David fled, and uh, through the event that God himself orchestrated, it came to pass that the word of God concerning David uh, came to its place, 
or to its moment of fulfillment. And David ascended the throne of Israel to become a king of Israel. And most of us, when we become kings or when we, we become worthy or when we receive the gift that we desired from God, we forget about him. But that was not the attitude of David. No. When David was... When David was made a king, he was anointed a king for the second time. The Bible makes us to understand in 2 Samuel chapter 6 that David made up his mind to look for the ark of the covenant of God, uh, which in this particular chapter is called the ark of the Lord or the ark of God. So David made a place for the ark of God in the city of David, a city he had established. And he desired that they would go and fetch the ark of God and come and put it in this particular city. Hallelujah. So it was a decision that David made. But David did not really seek God concerning how to bring the ark of the, of the Lord to the city of David. So while they were bringing it, they put it on a cart, on a particular animal, and two people were guiding the ark so that they will have a safe trip to the city of David. But when they got into a particular place, the Bible makes us to understand that the animal that carried the ark of the Lord stumbled. And when the animal stumbled, the man called Uzzah stretched forth his hand uh, to hold the ark of God so that the ark of God will not fall. And the Bible says God got angry and killed the man. So David was very, very angry. How can I desire to do the work of God and God will kill the people I am working with? And he was also afraid to move the ark of God with him. So he saw that there was a man, his name was Obedidom. That man was close by. He had a house close by. So David was afraid to take the ark of the Lord to him, to the city of David. So he decided, oh, let me, let me find a place in the house of this particular man. And let me put the ark of God there. And since he, he was the king, he easily had access to that house. And the man willingly welcomed them and they put the ark of the Lord there. And the ark remained in that place for three months. And the Bible makes us to understand that God blessed the man. He's, he was called Obedidom. God blessed him. And God did not only bless Obedidom, he blessed the entire people who lived in his house. To the point that people became jealous and they went and told David that, God has really blessed the man called Obedidom and his entire household because of the Ark of the Covenant or the Ark of the Lord that the, the man was housing. So David decided that, no, I won't let this man be blessed alone. Let me also go for that Ark and bring it to the city of David because he knew if God has blessed this man because the man was housing his Ark, his ark obviously God will bless him. Amen. So I want us to consider some few lessons from this particular scripture. The first one I want you to consider is that you have to make a room. Or you have to determine to make a room for God. Some of us, we desire to use God for our own means to our own end. It's like we have some desires upon our hearts. We have some plans we have some things that we are perceiving and we know that some way, somehow, God can help us to accomplish some things. So we desire the presence of God, not because we truly love God, but we know that God can give us the grace or he can help us with a breakthrough. So it's not that we have made room for God. No, we want to use God for our own end. We want just to use him as, as a means. I want you to just determine that, no, you are not going to use God as a means. But rather you will be like Obedidom. Though he might have seen that God was angry at some people. And when the people did not know even how to serve him, he destroyed someone who, who was even helping in conveying the ark. He destroyed him. But he was not afraid to house him. 
when the king turned to him and he wanted to put the house, uh, the, the Ark of the Covenant in his house, what, what, what you can say is that the man was determined even to perish. If the king was not prepared to perish because of the Ark of God and the man willingly received it into, it into his house, then what it means that the man was prepared to perish if the Ark of God was supposed to destroy him. So I want you and I to... To just make room for God. Make room for God in our houses. Make room for God in your heart. Make room for God in your business. How do we make room for God? The Bible makes us to understand in the book of, in, in, in the post epistle to the church in Corinth, that our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is God himself. So when we, when we make room for God, it means that we are, we are, we are giving room for God to operate in our lives, to come and live in us, to orchestrate things in our lives, uh, to order our steps according to his own will. That is how we make room for God. And we make room for God when we raise altars in our various houses. There are some of us, we don't even pray in our houses. We don't have family devotion. No, we are not raising our children consciously in the ways of God. It's like we wake up, we bath them, we bathe them, and we take them to school. Uh, they come, we feed them, they sleep, and they go to school the next day. We don't take, we, we don't take the conscious steps to raise the people that God has given us in the ways of God. The second point is that you should learn how to serve God and the house of God. When they were bringing the ark of God into the city of God, they didn't know the way that they were supposed to go. So God got angry. There are many of us who want to serve God the way we think we, are, we can do it. So there are so many debates and so many arguments about how we can serve God. So there are some people that claim that God looks, God looks at the heart so we can forget about uh, our art our outward appearance, we can look anyhow we want to and we worship God in your heart. My brother, my sister, don't deceive yourself. There are ways we serve God. You cannot serve God any way you, you want. Even in the way you dress, you can, you can serve God through the way you dress. You can serve God through the way you communicate with others. You can serve God through the way you honor the things that are that has to do with God. You can serve God through the way you minister his word to others. You can serve God through the way you consistently go to the church of God and give to the word of God. You can serve God through the, the way, the time that you get into the house of God, through the activities you are involved in the house of God. Some of you, you want people to just clean up the church of God so that you, are, you go into the house of God as if you are the bosses of the house of God. You go and worship and afterwards, you walk into your car and you go. It's like you, 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 you have nothing to do with the businesses in the church of God because you are not interested. No. We are all serving God. It doesn't matter your level, your education level. It doesn't matter your degree. It doesn't matter the class in which you may find yourself. You have to learn to serve God. Either than that, you can serve God in a way that you love, that may not ple be pleasing to, to God. And if you don't serve him in a way that is pleasing to him, he will not bless you. And the third one is that we should sacrifice to God. We should sacrifice to God. You know, when God killed Uzzah on the first attempt, David had to inquire of God on the ways that they were supposed to carry the ark of God. So this time around, the second time when they went for the ark, the Bible says they moved, some, they moved for some particular distance, they moved some particular steps, and they were sacrificed to God. So they sacrificed consistently, and David danced before the people uh, until his clothes even fell, and, and his wife was even angry because David danced until he became naked. Those things please God. What are you doing? How are you sacrificing to God? Even in this Lenten season, let it not be that you are just praying. No, 
Some of you, you don't know, but we have consistently said that during the Lenten season is a period of fasting, prayer, and alms giving. So we, we don't just fast and pray. We, we also have to sacrifice our substance to the work of God. We have to give to men of God. We have to give to the needy. We have to open our boards. Our, our boards and we have to give to people who need our support. When we bless people with our substance, we bless God. When we come to the house of God and we give beyond what we could naturally afford, we sacrifice unto God. And when we do that, God will bless us. So I want you to go beyond your natural ability and consistently give to God. Sacrifice, sacrifice, sacrifice. Sacrifice your time for evangelism. Sacrifice some time and witness to others. Sacrifice some time and be and just sometimes some people all they need is not your money but they need somebody to sit with them. Somebody to comfort them or somebody to just listen to them. That may be your ministry to God. I want you to sacrifice your time. And when you do all these things, it's, it's in a way you are housing God because God is, God is in your life and God is through you ministering to others. So as you serve God and you accommodate people in serving God because that is what God wants you to do, you are, you are giving room for God. And you are housing God. Hallelujah. As you make room in your house and consistently you pray with your family and you are raising them according to the ways of God, you are housing God. As you consistently go into the house of God and feed the flock of God, or you partake in the preparation for Sunday service, or you give, you contribute. To the, to the work of God. In a way, you are housing God because you are making the work of God go on. Some of us, it may not be easy for us to do. It may be easier said than done. But we may have a thousand excuses on why we cannot really house God or we cannot really be part in serving God. But there, you cannot give any excuse in the last day. God expects you and I to make room for him. God expects you and I to be a blessing to others. But the first thing he wants you and I to do is that we, we have to make room in our heart. We have to also make room in our houses. We have to make room. We have to spend time. We have to create the time if we don't have the time. We have to create the time to invest in his work. And we have to make time. That even as we are serving God, we make time for people who are in need. We serve God with, with our substance and we serve God through our service. Let's make room for God in every aspect of our lives. And we see that as God bless Obedidom, God will also bless us. God will bless us to the point that we will become the envy of others. And they will also come and desire to have the God that we serve and desire to serve him in a way. That pleases you. Amen. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you for the word you've given unto us. Father God, even as we desire to serve you, Father God, give us the grace. Give us the wisdom. Father God, we know that we, we may be pressed down with a lot of activities. But Father God, give us the wisdom to plan our lives and our, our time and everything that we have to do. Father God, so that we'll be able to create room for you in our houses. We'll be able to create room for you to have our quiet time. We'll be able to make room for you to even contribute in the church and help to raise up our community of faith and to be a blessing to others. In Jesus' name, have we prayed with thanksgiving. Amen. God richly bless you.